welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News Policy, the son of Nome is my name and uh, I want us to talk about a video that we posted earlier of an interview between uh, Zenzel and Debele, you know, journalist Zenzel and Debele, who is the proprietor of the Center for Innovation and Technology site. Uh, it is an online broadcasting platform. He spoke to Professor Welshman Nube, who is a, a seasoned politician in Zimbabwe, and he is the acting uh, president of the Citizens Coalition for Change, C, which is the mainstream opposition in Zimbabwe, as per parliamentary representation. So, there's been a widespread belief that Professor Nube is one of the people behind the controversial figure that is the enigmatic uh, Sengezo Chabangu, who is well known, especially to those that didn't know him until recently, uh, as the person who orchestrated the recalls of Triple C parliamentarians and councillors, uh, having written first to the Speaker of Parliament, uh, Advocate Jacob Mutenda, last year to seek the recall of certain parliamentarians from Triple C. So the belief out there or the accusations out there have been that Sengezo Chawangu is not his own man uh, and that he is working uh, with Professor Welshman Nube and Tendai Biti to try and um, get back at advocate Nelson Chamisa, who until recently was the Triple C president uh, for shutting them out uh, of representation in the November, in the August 23 and 24 elections uh, in Zimbabwe. So there is a telling interview that Professor Nube had with Zenzel Ndebele earlier today, and we want to dissect that particular interview. And the sticking point, as we have always been saying uh, on this channel, is that ZANU PF benefited immensely from Chabangu's actions, but it is unfair to then say that Chabangu is not his own man, to say Chabangu is a spook working for the ruling party. Yes, what he did benefited the ruling party because where he recalled people in certain areas, he failed to field triple C candidates. Yet he had complained that there were people who were imposed uh, at the expense of those that had been chosen by the people. And the normal way of going about it was that after he had recalled those that he said were imposed, he should have then uh, fielded those that he claimed were uh, disadvantaged in the by the imposition. But he didn't do that, which shows that either he was acting on his own accord or his claims were baseless. So now Professor Nube held an interview with Zenzel and Debele, as I've already said, and he said a number of things, sticking points, being that Triple C was no longer working in harmony, especially at the top. You remember that Triple C is uh, a manifestation of the mutation of the MTC alliance to a new formation after uh, advocate Douglas Monzora had claimed the name Triple C after he won the MTCT leadership uh, following a, a, a special congress that was held in which he beat uh, Senator Dr. Dr. Tawazani Kupe. So, after this mutation, the belief was that the leadership would just uh, move on as it was under MTC Alliance to this new formation, albeit with a, a new color and a new slogan as well as a new logo. But this didn't happen when Advocate Chamisa later on claimed that he was the only one uh, who had or who retained his position as president of the party and the rest uh, had to survive on his generosity depending on whether or not he wanted to dish uh, out positions to them. So this, in this telling interview, Professor Nube says that there was disharmony within the party, there were fundamental ideological differences within the party, and that advocate Nelson Chamisa decided at some point to surround himself with his favorites. He decided 
uh, to call the shots on his own in total disrespect to collective uh, engagements to rule or leadership by consensus. So I want us to dissect this interview and listen carefully because this is a telling interview as I've said to those who want to achieve a democratic Zimbabwe in which a uh, majority uh, rules, let me say, in which the collective will supersedes uh, personal ambitions. So I would like us to listen to this point and then we come back to discuss the politics it. of no values, the po toxic politics where we continue to be deceitful which is completely unhelpful. What, what we need is to distinguish ourselves from ZANU-PF. What we need is to be demonstrably different from ZANU-PF as a democratic party uh, that believes in democratic leadership, uh, that uh, believes in a collective leadership, that believes in all the values and principles of social democracy, which were always embedded in our constitution from the very beginning. And uh, unfortunately, over time, we have veered sometimes so far off uh, those values and principles so far off those rails that we we often become unrecognizable. When we compete uh, for toxicity with ZANU PF, when when we compete for authoritarian leadership, when we compete for autocratic, when in fact the difference between us and ZANU PF should be the difference between day and night. Right? And, and, and these are the things which matter, these are the things we must uh, sort of swear allegiance to once again, to re-embrace them. And they are the things which unite us, which put us together. Those are the values, the things we believe in, the ideological cohesion arises out of those beliefs. The, the moment we appear simple to believe that we exist for the sole purpose of simply removing ZANU-PF regardless of what we stand for, then we have a problem because you then don't have the glue that ties you together. What ties people together in a political organization are the things that you believe in, are the things that you are fighting for, the things that you want to do when you are in government, the society that you want to build, the things you want to do for the people, right? to address issues of poverty, to address issues of joblessness, to, to address all the bread and butter issues, the promises of the liberation struggle, all of those values, that, that, those are the things that bring you together. The, the, the moment you don't have common values, the moment you don't profess allegiance to common values, the moment you do not uh, have an ideological red thread tying you together, th then you, you, you are nothing more than charlatans uh, questing for power for the sake of power. That's not who we are, that's not who we have been, and that is not who we established to be. Out of interest, when, when last did you speak to Nelson Chamis? Quite some time ago. It's well over maybe two months when I spoke to him personally myself. But during those Chawangu days, did you guys try and say, but let's find each other? Yes, uh, this, this is the time when we're talking. Uh, but un understand that uh, by this time, hmm, there are fundamental differences in the part. There, there are differences uh, in respect of which we no longer had a firm. We had suspended uh, meetings of the standing committee, we had suspended meetings of the National Council. In fact, the National Council last met on the 22nd uh, of, of January 2022. And, and, and uh, we should not gloss over some of these dif differences if, if we are being honest and we are not deceitful uh, politicians. And, and, and these differences do arise in life, in politics. These differences are genuine political, ideological differences. Well, as you could hear, uh, the professor is saying that the party leadership was no longer meeting as the collective leadership, which means that somebody was calling the shots from certain areas with a certain people that he had surrounded himself with and he says this is the main reason 
why Triple C ended up uh, imploding because there was no more uh, platform in which leaders could engage either to fortify the movement or to resolve some internal uh, dispute that had arisen where th there were some people who had aggrieved, were aggrieved by what uh, had happened previously or what was happening within the party. And then this is the main reason why uh, we ended up having to see Chabang going forward to recall people using a position that he didn't in essence hold within the party so let us listen again to further uh, engagements between Zenzele and mm -hmm. Professor Nube. Those of us who didn't want to go back who accepted the conclusion that the issues were moot moved on and accepted that the party had reconfigured itself had reconstituted itself had elected a leadership in Guel and moved on. That is why that leadership operated from that time of, of the judgment, the Patel judgment, up to the uh, meeting of the National Council on 22 January uh, 2022. And it was at the meeting of that National Council, the supreme organ of the party in between Congresses, that questions were posed to, to the membership of the, of, of the National Council. And, and, and these were the questions. Uh, are we going to participate in the by-elections, which were a mini-election, which had been scheduled for March of that year? Were we going to participate or stay out? Uh, we resolved unanimously, virtually, that we're going to participate. And uh, as of the moment we're deciding we're still MDC Alliance, where the council, the National Council of the MDC Alliance. We then posed the second question, given that Douglas Monzora and others had stated publicly that they were going to participate in those by-elections, not as MDCT, but as MDC Alliance. Were we going to continue to participate as MDC Alliance and encourage the confusion which was intended? We decided no. We're not going to participate in that election as MTC Alliance. We're going to participate under a new party name, Triple C. We therefore resolved that from henceforth we will call ourselves Triple C and we're going to participate in the March elections as Triple C. We further decided under what banner, under what colors were we going to, to participate. We resolved that we are going to abandon the, the color red as the uh, predominant color of the party, we are going to adopt the uh, yellow color. We asked ourselves, are we going to continue with the MTC Alliance uh, slogans, Chinjama, Itiro, Kukula, Zenzo, etc., etc. We again resolved that we are going to abandon, adopted those logos. And we proceeded after that meeting uh, as a MTC Alliance renamed Triple C, which is why we continued in the same offices as we had occupied before. Our MPs who had not crossed the floor to Monzora, our MPs who had come from what was the MTC Green before the Alliance, which had come from PDP, continued as Triple C members of Parliament post uh, that meeting of 22 January 2022. So, it is dishonest, uh, it is deceitful for anyone to suggest that of the MDC Alliance National Council as it met in Mazavuba in Harar hmm, on that date. That, that is the truth of the matter. So you can hear again, okay, Professor Watchman Nube is, of course, uh, admitting that this was a mutation from the MTC Alliance as a structure which as a part which already had its leadership in place, which already had structures in place, but because of uh, a challenge that was posed by Senator Monzora uh, claiming the name MTC Alliance, the party took a collective decision that it was then mutating from uh, the MTC alliance, where there was a clash of colors with Douglas Monzora, where there was a clash uh, of um, party name with Douglas Monzora, where, was, where there was also a clash between slogans, uh, within slogans with Douglas Monzora, and as well a clash in the local with Senator Douglas Monzora. They then decided as a collective that they were moving on 
uh, into changing, not forming a new party, into changing some of these things. They were supposed to change the name of the party, which they did from MTC Alliance to Triple C, which is the Citizens Coalition for Change. They had to change the party uh, logo from what it was into this new logo bearing Nelson Chamisa's head. They had to change the party slogan into a new slogan as well as uh, the party colors from red, which was predominant in the MTC from 2000 to uh, the yellow color that they later adopted. So the belief was that as they move on, the structure was not going to be tempered with, the structures were not going to be tempered with. But all of a sudden, they heard that they were no longer holding positions, they heard that the structures were no longer uh, existing except uh, at the instigation or at the will of Nelson Chamisa would pick and choose which structure to identify within the party. But he made sure that he didn't recognize any of the national leaders that the party had. So let us go on again in this telling interview. We had suspended uh, meetings of the standing committee. We had suspended meetings of the National Council. In fact, the National Council last met on the 22nd uh, of, of January 2022. And, and, and uh, we should not gloss over some of these dif differences if, if we are being honest and we are not deceitful uh, politicians. And, and, and these differences do arise in life, in politics. The, these differences are genuine political ideological differences. Uh, when, when some of us believe that if you, have a, you are fighting a struggle against ZANU-PF, a, a, a ZANPF government which you characterize as authoritarian, as autocratic, as having a accumulated centered power in one, in one person. And we say we, we must be the antithesis of this. We, we must therefore demonstrably be the opposite of ZANU-PF. We, we, we must do, while in opposition, the things that we will be expected to do when we're in government. You cannot uh, run an autocratic, an authoritarian, a theocratic opposition and then expect sincere, genuine people to believe that once you are in power, you will no longer believe in theocracy, you will no longer believe in autocracy, you will no longer believe in author to those values and principles. Okay, as you can hear, Professor Nube admits that in a way, uh, let me say in the way or in the manner that Advocate Nelson Chamisa was doing certain things, surrounding himself with yes boys, blue-eyed boys for that matter, who would agree with whatever he said, people who pretended that they were there in the party at his, uh, um, as a favor, let me say, from advocate Nelson Chamisa at the expense of the collective of the party, at the expense of the collective leadership of the party. Professor Nube says um, Nelson Chamisa was then behaving in the same manner with ZANU PF. He was behaving in a manner that, according to the words of the professor, was autocratic, was theocratic, and you know, you all know what autocratic means. It means a dictatorial leadership where uh, unilateral decisions are made, where things are done arbitrarily, uh, without uh, consultation, without collective engagement, without consensus. And then theocracy, it is a situation whereby um, you have people believing a system in which uh, a certain people or a leader believes that he is there by the will of God. He is the only God-ordained person who is required to lead. And therefore, because he speaks to the word of God, or he speaks the word of God, he cannot therefore be challenged. So this is a deep, deep uh, analysis of what was happening within Triple C. And this now, it proves that there were indeed fundamental problems within Triple C, there were indeed ideological problems within Triple C in which those who are bent uh, on finding the lasting solution to the Zimbabwean crisis, who are bent 
on reforming the system that Zimbabwe or the Zimbabwean ruling party is presiding on right now felt no 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 we are now becoming just another ZANU PF using false identity. We are no longer different from the same thing that we claim we are fighting against. Therefore, uh, something has to be done. So it then shows that those who are claiming that Chavangu was uh, working with ZANU PF are just being simplistic about this because there were deep uh, seated grievances within the party, grievances which, because there was no longer a platform, for leaders to meet and discuss then it gave an opportunist uh, some time uh, or a loophole to then take advantage of us or of yeah so you uh, fast forward past the the elections and then we have the the the, the chabang issue recalling mps and uh, uh, the talk was uh, prof welsh and btr behind uh, uh, chabang were you behind chabang of course not but again when people refuse to take responsibility for creating the circumstances which lead to such unfortunate incidents. You, you, you then engage in witch hunting. Uh, this one there, this one there, this one is responsible for this. It's so sad and so unfortunate. Um, the truth of the matter is this, and uh, I, I hope I can say this without taking a, a lot of time. I, I as an individual, learned for the first time about the first wave of recalls from a friend who is in the diaspora. I was, I was coming out of the high court, they called me and they actually say, uh, Nelson Chamisa has recalled people. I said, no, that's not possible. They insist there's a letter in parliament uh, recalling people. He has recalled people. I said, it's, it's not possible. Give me the names of the people who have been recalled. They give me the names of the people. I said, it's not possible. Uh, for Chamisa to have recalled the people you say is because some these are some of his closest friends, some of his closest allies. It's not possible. I, I then uh, say, they say, but there is a letter. I say, okay, do you have the letter? Yes. Send it to me. They send it to me on WhatsApp. I read the letter. It's, it's, it's signed by Sengezo Chabang. I, I say, but uh, Sengezo Chabang is not the interim SG of uh, a triple C. Uh, I call him. Actually, to phone and call Chabang. Chabang, there, this letter, surely it must be fake. Uh, it bears your signature and your name. Did you sign it? He says, yes, I wrote it. Hmm? And I say, but like how? And uh, you will do something like that without even telling some of us? He says, uh, we, we knew. He, he uses a plural. We knew that you would not approve. But we did it. I, I could go on to the to the second uh, phase of recalls, and and this second phase of recalls happens when we were uh, basically uh, in mourning for for my my late mark, and the people who came to the funeral work uh, say to me, uh, seventy three people have been recalled, and I said really? He says yes, uh, the letters have gone. I again call Chaba and say to him, eh, have you recalled eh, these people? He says, no, I haven't recalled these people. So I reassure people that, no, I've spoken to Chabang. He says, I haven't recalled anybody. Eh, then when 23 people are recalled, I call him again. I call him again. But you, you said to me, you haven't recalled anybody. And his answer was, no, 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 no. I said I hadn't recalled 73 people. I didn't say I hadn't recalled anybody. I said, but surely you should have then said, it's untrue that 73 people have been recalled, only 23 people have been recalled. Right? So this couldn't have been happening. Right? This couldn't have been happening if Chabang was not his own man, if, if Chabang was controlled by me. And, and and if you needed evidence that uh, he, I didn't control Chabangu, and I know for a fact uh, that VPBT didn't control Chabangu, he was as much in the dark as I was. The the people who knew are the people you read about now, uh, even attacking the Gweru leadership, uh, saying we were cowards and calling us all sorts of things. Those are the people who were involved, not us. But because... Uh, 
we we love to create scapegoats because we have become deceitful because honesty is no longer one of those things uh, which we uh, value uh, you then have these sorts of things clearly self-explanatory the professor is one of those who agreed of course he says that he didn't know about Chabangu's machinations about Chabangu's move until at some point when he was called by somebody in the diaspora a friend of his who then told him that no no no, no there have been some recalls although the person first thought that it was Nelson Chamisa recalling but again there's something telling this professor Nguyen says when he was told the list of people that have been recalled he said no 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 no, no. wait a minute there is no way that Chamisa would have recalled these people because these are people in his inner circle which means within the party there were there were circles now there were people who would not be touched by Nelson Chamisa but that also means that there were people that he could touch so he could have recalled people but not those that were recalled by Chabam which means that there were serious differences there were serious fissures within Triple C so this is what I wanted us to discuss and as I have always been saying we will not be able to correct the situation in Zimbabwe if we do not first correct the situation within the opposition. And as the professor is saying, there is no way that somebody can be a, an authoritarian leader now, a theocrat now, and then only after they've gotten into power, they change their colors. This is what I've been saying also to people who say that let us first remove Zanu PF and then we'll deal with the, the rest later. We had the same problem in 1980. People went to war. They knew when they came back that there was a party which was tribalistic in nature, which was formed on the basis of tribalism, a party which was hell-bent on getting power at all costs, as ex uh, expressed by their actions whilst they were still in exile, whilst it was still hot in the liberation front, where they killed each other, they murdered their fellow comrades, and wherever they met with those who were fighting for the same liberation, but on a different front, they would attack them. We know that just before the elections in 1980, ZANU-PF went on a murdering spree, spree in Mashona Land where it murdered people and told them that if we lose this election, we're going to come back and we're going to bayonet you, we're going to kill you. And so they won an election based on this violence. But we've still made that same mistake of saying, let us deal with Smith now, and then we'll correct the rest later. And we met Mugabe, the poster boy of Zimbabwean democracy. Eventually, when he got into power, just a few years later, a couple of years later, he started killing people. He killed 20,000 um, people, Zimbabweans for that matter, black Zimbabweans for that matter, just on the basis that they belonged in a certain tribe and they supported a certain party which had formed a stronghold in that particular region. This is the same mistake that we want to uh, make right now, where we want to push aside realizations that somebody is being an autocratic leader, somebody is a dictator, just because we are hell-bent or obsessed with getting rid of ZANU-PF. We forget that politics is more about an ideology that somebody is representing, a philosophy that somebody believes in, the policies that that particular person has, as opposed to just the mere removal of one party and replacing it with another. Because what we need now is a reformation of the Zimbabwean system. We need to reform it as opposed to conforming to it. We need to change the way things are being done. And we cannot wait until we are in power for us to begin showing that we mean what we are talking about, that we act what we preach. So, this is what we've always been saying. I'm glad that the professor has said these things again from an insider point of view. They felt that they were sidelined. They were not given a platform uh, to discuss some of these uh, issues that were happening, which means that within the party, Nelson Chamisa alienated some leaders and created this other layer of leadership. He created another center of power where people were not even part of the executive, were now 
being the ones that were being considered, they were the ones that he spoke to, creating this circle around himself. So these are the things that we need to tackle. And I hope that you're going to listen to the whole interview. We posted it here and also on the site website. It is there on the site Facebook channel. It is there. So let us engage on these things. You can write to us. You can SMS us. You can WhatsApp us on 073-962-3075 or use the comment section underneath this video to say your views. We will be back again tomorrow. But for now, goodbye. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it, and also press the notification bell just uh, on this uh, channel so that whenever we come online, you become uh, notified. Thank you very much.